You're wafted through the air. No, you shouldn't be touching her or him. That's the fourth one. Oh, if you say, I love German chocolate cake. And I know I should be. I'm trying to be a singer. And sugar messes me up like crazy. I'm always like a frog when I get to eat too much sugar. And that is, that's a living hell because I love German chocolate cake. But I can't eat it. <laughs> but the devil said, well, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to put the pressure. Everyone is tailor-made. Every one of his temptations is tailor-made for you. Mine's different from yours. But his is tailor made for you and you and you and you. But they all are an attack on the five senses. We got one more left. If it feels good, just keep on and doing it. Keep doing it. And when the serpent was talking to Eve, he appealed to a sixth sense. Because God said, you shouldn't be up there. Touching this thing. You shouldn't be eating from this fruit. Because the moment that you do, you're going to be reeling and, and rolling. And then you're going to die. Because God said the day that you eat it, you will die. That's what it said. And, but the serpent is up here eating it and he's regaling. You ever heard that word? Regaling? It's a good word. But in this case, it was very deceptive. Regaling means, as he was eating half of he was regaling. <clears throat> you know, I thought I had an apple here in my pocket, but I've gotten rid of my apple. And we, I mean, I'm eating. This is good stuff. He's, re he's regaling. Smacking his lips. And he's a pretty looking thing. He was the most beautiful creature. He appealing to the five <laughs> senses. Boy, that's a good smelling fruit. You know how succulent fruit used to smell. You can step in the room and ah, you smell it. And looking at how beautiful, everything, God made everything beautiful, it was good. So he was appealing to the five senses. And because he wasn't reeling from the ill effects of eating it, what happened? She used the six senses which is C-O-M-M-O-N. Common sense. Common sense tell you that uh, if he's up there eating that thing and he's not dying, then it ain't deadly. Because God said that the moment you touch the thing, you're going to do You're going to be sick and you're going to be really and you're going to die. She didn't know that the day that God was referring to, as 2 Peter, the third chapter says, one day to God is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. How old did Adam get before he died? Just about a, just about a day. Just about one day. Just about a thousand years. But he didn't get there. He died within that day, thus fulfilling God's word that what? In that day, sure. In that day, you're going to surely die. He didn't die within that 24-hour period, but he died within that 1,000-year period. But common sense told her, I got to eat it because the devil ain't dying. I mean, the serpent ain't dying. So it's okay. Common sense. Don't lead to your own understanding. One ounce. One ounce of inspiration from God's mouth has far more weight to it than a ton of human speculation. Amen. Don't be speculating when God says, don't do it, don't do it. It's summed up and it's wrapped up in love. love, period. He's trying to help you. He didn't create you to kill you. I got to put enmity between you. All that to say that we are sensual. The reason why we're struggling with this sin is because we like it. Because of the five senses and the six senses common is, is uh, establishing it. What else does it say in the 315? Here's the 315. What is it? Somebody read it. Read it. 
And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Right. And, Keep them on. Okay. And between thy seed and her seed. Right. It shall bruise thy head. What is the it that's going to bruise? The serpent. What is the it that shall bruise? The bruise shall what? Read it, read it again. It shall what? Let me sure I got the right it. <laughs> and it shall bruise thy head. Thy seed. His seed shall. Right. And what else? And thou shalt bruise his heel. Whose head is going to be bruised? Whose head is going to be bruised? The serpent, which is Satan. The Satan's head is going to be bruised. Not crushed at that moment, but it will be bruised, right? Yes. It is what, in the first it is what? Christ. Yeah. You see, he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. He was telling him that. It, Jesus Christ is going to bruise your head. You don't kill a snake just because you bruise the head. He will eventually die. But you don't mess around and pick up that tail where that head is still wounded. Because it's instinctive for the snake to call back and boom, hit you with that bruised head and the fangs and the poison sack is still in there. Still kill you even though they have a bruised head. And he's killing us today. Although his head has been bruised and the plan of salvation has been finished, we're still being bitten by this thing. So that was a prophecy that was given in Genesis 3.15 foreshadowing Jesus. Unfortunately, so many cultures have taken that from the foundation of and perverted it. Do you know that that was foreshadowing Jesus coming? Do you know that Dionysus was a type of a immaculate Christ that had 12 disciples? 2,000, 3,000 years before Jesus got here. The devil was taking it way back there and started perverting it. You see? So when Maitreya came, and when Dionysus went Krishna, everybody in the Hindu, Hinduism, have you ever been in the exposed to Hindu, and who Krishna, yeah. Krishna is? He was a Christ too. About 1,800 years before Jesus. At least 500 years before Jesus. But Trey, I think it was all Christ. The devil said, if I can't beat him when he comes, I'm going to pervert it. I'm going to pervert it so that when he does come, it will make him none effect the very fact. We'll call it a what? We'll call it paganism. When the devil stole the idea from Jesus, way back here in Genesis. You see that? How tricky he is? But let's go to the very last verse. Genesis 3. Someone read where they're talking about coats. Coats of, of fur. Genesis 3 towards the end. I'll get it for you. Genesis 3 verses mm, is it 21? Verses 21. Yes, yes. Let me read what this is saying. And Adam and unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothing. Where you get them coats from? Yeah. A, a lamb that was made from the foundation of the world. It was a lamb. Here's Adam and Eve. What are they dressed in? What kind of leaves? Fig leaves. What's wrong with fig leaves? I'm leaning to my own understanding, Adam and Eve said. They were covered with a robe of light, and when they sinned, Ichabod. What is Ichabod? The glory has departed, so they were covered with this light, and when the sin of eating the fruit came in because of desire, Adam desired his wife, and she desired wisdom and all this other kind of stuff. Desire, five senses, you see. Now, when the, the sin comes in, the light goes out. So, oh, we, oh. Put the fig leaves on them. Okay? Problem with fig leaves is this. It has a milky white sap in it. Anybody dealt with figs in here? Anyone? Look, we ever broke the leaves off and you see that little milky white sap that's on it? If you take and rub that stuff on you, it's okay, fine. But you go out in the sunlight, 
with that stuff all over you, it will irritate your skin. It is, it is, it, the photosynthesis is, is there, but it is a disease that comes from that. And the scientists call it phytophotodermatitis. <laughs> you see, what is it? Phyto plant photolite derma, dermatitis. Any medical people in here? What is it? Idols of the derma. It's an inflammation of the dermal of the skin, right? Because you got that milky white sap on you. You gotta get, you don't put that stuff on you. It's worse than poison ivory when it is exposed to. Like, who's alive in the world? And what was Adam and Eve exposed to? Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is gonna wipe your skin out. Take those things off. So God told him to take off the fig leaves and all of because it's going to hurt you. Let me put something on you that's going to comfort you. Adam, you and Eve, come on, take that stuff off you. You're hurting yourself. Slit the lamb's throat right in front of Adam and Eve. Skin the animal right in front of Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve going, <gasps>
and I want you to help me to sing it, and we'll teach.
is it that you could have done for us that you didn't do already? And yet we are so locked in our sensual gratification of self that we're not too able to properly discern the magnitude of this stepping down of yours to meet us where we are in the sin cluttered chambers of our heart here on planet Earth. The only planet in the whole cosmos that has gone straight. Jesus left the ninety and the nine in a safe place. And then he came down to this one unsafe place to become one with us Die that ignominious death. The song is correct. What wondrous love is this? That you can bear the curse for my soul like that. We want to say to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are thankful for what Jesus did for us. We want to embrace, we want to accept his proposal. We want to embrace it. We want to be covered in his blood. We want to be covered with his white robe of righteousness. That lamb that was slain from the foundation. We embrace the lamb, Father. We uphold him and we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the only way in the heaven where by we must be saved. Now give us the impetus to go and tell somebody else about it. And then as you have promised in Matthew 24, 14, that when that gospel, the good news of your sacrifice and death, mm -hmm. and it's gone to every nation, kindred and tongue, all 7.5 billion of us, then the end will come. Let this be the all-embracing thing that we take into heart during this season and into the next year is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for suffering long. How much time did we go in? As we leave, we'll have a plate for an offering for his ministry if you guys want to give. We're having a meal out there. Thank you. Thanks for coming, my good man. All right.